What's up everyone? Welcome to another Joel Arsano YouTube video. I am very excited because today we are doing some porting on the Kawasaki 1100 triple that is in my X2. Before we get into that, a big thanks to everyone who's been supporting me here on YouTube, whether that's simply watching my videos, subscribing to the channel, or leaving likes. All that stuff definitely helps, so thank you very much. I do appreciate it. A special thanks to all of my Patreon members and Werner, my latest Patreon member. Hopefully I'm saying that name correctly. I actually had to look it up on Google. Turns out it is of German origin and it means warrior or defender. Hopefully Google wasn't completely incorrect with that and I don't look like a complete moron. Thank you, Werner, for supporting me on Patreon. I do appreciate it. If you guys are interested, there is a link in the description below. Feel free to go check that out. I've wanted to do porting on the 1100 triple since before even building it, but stuffing it into the X2 required a significant amount of modifications, and I didn't want to add one more thing to the list of modifications that could make it act funny. So now after driving the X2 for a year and having a pretty good idea of how it works, it is time to do some porting, some other modifications, and see if we can make this thing into a real monster. Not that it isn't already. Back in December, I made a video on porting my Crash KV997 and went into a fair amount of detail about a few things that you should do before you ever pick up a porting tool. Installing a degree wheel, doing some port mapping, and checking your port timing. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, feel free to go check that out, linked in the description below. In all of the porting that I will be doing in this video and the porting that I did on the crash, I will be using this Viver rotary flex shaft tool that has worked amazing and made my life a whole lot easier. If you guys are interested in picking up one of those tools, there will be an affiliate link in the description below. If you use that link, it helps me out as I get a small kickback. I have contacted Viver and asked them for a discount code, so hopefully they say yes and there will be a link down there in the description for that. If you're interested, feel free to go check that out. I will be releasing a video on my Lowered Expectations channel that goes into a lot more detail about the tool itself. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, feel free to go check it out, linked in the description below. When I first started looking at the porting on the 1100 engine, I actually didn't think it was too bad, but then when I started looking at it with it in mind that I was going to be doing porting, Suddenly I started noticing a whole bunch of casting flaws, a whole bunch of sharp edges, and just some nasty stuff that definitely needs to be cleaned up. I'm going to start off gentle with a steel burr on aluminum. I'm going to work around the exhaust a little bit. Start off easy. Haven't ported anything in a few months. So uh, just want to get re-familiarized with the tool. And, uh, We'll see how it goes here. I've got the basic cleanup work done on the exhaust ports. I'm going to do the basic cleanup work on everything. And then I'll move on to the kind of more extreme stuff. Just like I did with the exhaust ports, I removed the casting marks from the transfers. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to film it because it is actually really hard for me to see in there, let alone to film in there. I'm not sure how well the camera will pick up any of this stuff, but there are plenty of improvements that can be made. There are a bunch of shoulders here in the where the reed cages come in. So these shoulders can be rounded off. There's a lot of work that can be done here. I'm probably going to switch over to one of the aluminum bits because that removes material a lot quicker and there is a substantial amount of material to remove here.
As you guys have seen from some of those clips, I started on the case porting. I've got some of these edges rounded off on the transfer ports. I've gotten the steps rounded off where the reed intake area goes into the crankcase. That probably isn't terribly necessary because the web of the crank does go in here and so I'm kind of doubting that that will actually give me any benefit. But uh, I did it anyway because it makes me feel good. And that's what porting is really all about. Uh, when doing tunnel porting on pretty much any engine, there are a few places that you are very likely to break through. If there's epoxy in these locations before you break through, it's not a big deal. But adding epoxy after is very tricky because it's just going to want to run out. So what we're gonna do is rough up these holes with the Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool, spray them out with some brake cleaner, and then fill them up with some thickened epoxy. All right. Looks like we're gonna have enough epoxy thought I was going to have to mix up another batch when I started. While I was waiting for the epoxy to dry, I used some magic marker, marked off the sides of the exhaust port. Then I used a square to line up with the edge of the exhaust port. And then I marked a mark two millimeters from each side. And that is where I'm going to cut the new exhaust port to. Go ahead, Joel, say exhaust port one more time. I dare you. In the name of making this video a little bit shorter and not too repetitive, I decided to do the exhaust port widening off camera. I stuck with the factory radius, meaning I did not square off the top edges of the exhaust ports. Squaring them off can give you a little bit more peak power, but it usually comes at the expense of a less dependable engine because you can snag a piston ring and have a very bad day and it usually makes the power band a little bit more peaky, meaning it makes the power band range a little bit more narrow. So we're just leaving the radius the way it is. I'm now going to port match the upper case to the transfer ports. I'm applying some magic marker, then I will put the cylinders on, scribe off a line where the material needs to be removed, and then get in there with the Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool and hog away a bunch of material. Just wait until you see how much needs to be removed. That is 2.8 millimeters. This one shows up the best. Look at that. That is ridiculous. It is now the next day. I've finished roughing out the ports or this part of the case the way that I want it. I'm going to do a little bit of touch up work on it further down the road, but for now I'm going to leave it the way it is and move on to touching up the transfer ports. So the main area of the ports I already have touched up, but I am going to go around where it actually goes through the cylinder liner, and I'm gonna clean up around there a little bit, make that transition a little bit smoother. I should clarify that this tool did not come with the Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool. This one came with it, and it is the one that I use most of the time. They pull off just like that very convenient and the new one pops on I think I got this for $56 or something like that on Amazon and it pushes back on you just need to make sure to get the shaft lined up properly and then it clicks on like that and you're ready to go was but I've got the transfer ports all cleaned up as far as casting marks go. The uh, Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool with this 90 degree end on it made it a dream. It still is a little bit tricky if you uh, haven't done it before. Controlling the tool is tricky and there's some places that you just can't get to. What can make that a whole lot easier if you use left-hand bits, but I don't have any left-hand bits. And what I mean by that 
is that the Viver rotary flex shaft tool actually has forward and reverse on it, unlike your typical Dremel. If you take a look at that tip, you will see it is currently spinning that way, whatever that way is to you. And now if I turn it this way, it's the opposite way. So you can buy left hand burrs, which again, I don't have any of, and that can help you when you get into tight spots because the tool, especially at the 90 degree angle, will try to pull in one direction. And when you get into corners, it can be quite tricky. And just like that, I'm switched back over to my other tool. I'm gonna do a little bit more touch up work and then I need to do some port matching between the exhaust and the cylinder. Port matching the exhaust ports was basically the exact same thing as with the transfers. Marking it off with a marker, scribing a line, and then removing a little bit of material with the Viva rotary flex shaft tool. I now have a sanding drum in and I'm using it to do the finishing work on the transfers. This is the basic procedure for doing what they call tunnel porting on any case read engine. I would more accurately refer to it as trench porting because what you're essentially doing is making a trench between the area where the reed cage sits and the entrance of the transfer port. You would use a rotary flex shaft tool with a burr to remove the bulk of the material and do the general profiling and then use a sanding drum to do your last profiling and all of your touch up work. You will almost certainly cut through, so it is a good idea that you've already put your epoxy in there. This is a perfect example of how having a reversible rotary flex shaft tool comes in really handy. When I'm doing these corners on the right hand side, the tool is turning clockwise and it's trying to pull itself into the corner, which makes it easy to have a starting point because the tool always wants to return to the corner. And so it's very easy to get a nice consist consistent grind on this side. But when I come over here, because it's rotating clockwise, it's trying to push me out of the corner. So what I can do with the Viver rotary flex shaft tool is actually reverse the direction and that will pull the uh, drum, sanding drum, into the corner and make this grind way easier and way more consistent. You have to be gentle with it because the thread on the end of this is normal thread, clockwise thread. And so if I'm too aggressive, it will actually loosen off. Not a big deal, you just tighten it again. But if you're gentle, it actually won't loosen off and you can continue grinding or sanding. I finished up all of my porting using the Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool, which worked absolutely flawlessly. And then I decided to do a little bit of sandblasting. Actually, a whole lot of sandblasting. I did some crash parts. I did the exhaust and a bunch of other stuff on this that we're not going to look at right now. What we're looking at right now is the upper case, which turned out amazing. I'm really happy with this. Nice and uniform, nice matte finish. Beautiful. And the cylinder itself, which you guys will see, is no longer green. And the ports are a nice matte finish, very uniform, very nice. I'm also very proud of myself for not going way over the top and getting carried away doing a whole bunch of stuff that really won't make any difference in the end. If you guys saw the video where I ported the crash, or even before that, when I ported my 650, I got completely carried away. And uh, well, on the 650, I actually used a polishing compound on the exhaust ports and made them a mirror finish. So on this, I tried to focus basically the least amount of time for the most amount of gain and uh, tried to do things that were just focused around, uh, you know, making power. Of course, if polishing it makes you feel good, then uh, that's what really matters, I guess, so have at it. 
But for this one, uh, a little bit of a time crunch. I want to get this thing back together on the water as soon as possible. Of course, we do have to wait for it to thaw. But uh, I am going to uh, be installing the Zealtronics CDI before I get it out on the water. Uh, I am curious what you guys think about me powder coating this stuff. Uh, I'm not sure even what colors I have. We're not going to get into that right now. But do you think I should get back together and get the Zealtronics on it? Or should I powder coat some stuff first? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you guys are interested in picking up your very own Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool, I will have a affiliate link in the description below. And if I'm able to talk Viva into it, a discount code for you guys. So if you're interested, go check that out. Uh, hopefully they give me a good discount code for you guys. This thing has worked absolutely flawlessly. I was recommending this to people. I did buy this with my own money, by the way, and I was recommending it to people long before I was ever affiliated with Viver in any way. If you do purchase one of these, it will help me out. I get a small kickback. But uh, yeah, this uh, thing just makes porting a dream compared to using a Dremel. I've always wanted one of these and uh, now they are quite affordable. So if you're interested, go check it out. This one has forward and reverse. It has the quick change tool. You can get the 90 degree tool. I got this off Amazon, not from Viver, And it just goes on there. It helps you get into tight spaces. But uh, most of the time what you use is this one here. I think all in for the 90 degree angle tool, the Viver rotary flex shaft tool and some carbide cutter bits, it cost me less than $300 considerably less than $300. So excellent value. If you're going to do any porting, they're great for other stuff as well. But if you're going to do any amount of porting, definitely a must have. I have a strong suspicion that the next video is going to be about powder coating. If you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe. And while you're down there, you might as well hit that like button because why not? I sure hope you liked the video and I hope that you were excited about this project. Next up, as I said, probably powder coating. After that, we are going to do an engine build on the 1100, and then we are going to install the Zealtronic CDI. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.